By its very nature, the horror genre is littered with the most heinous individuals imaginable committing horrible, unspeakable, and unforgivable acts. While brutality is one way to drum up dread and make an audience uncomfortable, there are so many other ways to have horror hounds wincing in their seats, and at times, there's no better way to get under someone's skin than by serving up a character who is, well, a bit of a creep. In that vein, for this list, we're taking a look at these horror characters who were so ew inducing, they had you crossing your fingers that something truly dreadful was gonna happen to them. I'm Jess from War Culture, and here are 10 horror movie characters who made our skin crawl. Number 10, Todd Hughes. Hostel Part 2. With his second Hostel offering, Eli Roth gave audiences a character who was absolutely the pits of unlikable. Of course, there's the elite hunting club itself, whose particular business of torture is chillingly sinister. Then there's Stuart, played by Roger Bart, the seemingly meek and mild fella who finds himself winning an auction to commit bloody murder, and then goes full on nuts. The most disturbing, annoying piece of the Hostel 2 puzzle, though, has to be Richard Berge's Todd Hughes. Essentially, a minted jock who never grew up, Todd is nothing but pumped at the idea of getting to terrorize and torture some unsuspecting innocents. In this case, this prick is the winner when it comes to an auction to kill two young American girls, those girls being Beth and Bijou Phillips's Whitney. After all of his bravado and general bro behavior, the kicker in Hostel Part 2 is that Todd completely bottles the task at hand when he finally finds himself faced with the tied up Whitney. After accidentally scouting Helping his victim, Todd panics, starts to cry, and tries to leave the elite hunting group facility. Fortunately for audiences, Todd's escape is foiled and he's torn apart by a pack of dogs. Number 9. Zorro Frankenhooker. Any chance to talk about Frank Henenlotter's Frankenhooker is a chance that must be taken, right? In Henenlotter's unique 1990 spin on the classic Frankenstein tale, Budding scientist Jeffrey Franken blows up a group of hookers with his super crack drug in order to use their body parts to recreate his deceased girlfriend Elizabeth, played by Patty Mullen, with Liz having been decapitated in a tragic lawnmower accident. Overseeing said ladies is their pimp Zorro, who is initially hugely eager to let Lawrence's Jersey boy spend time with his bitches. Well, that is, until all of these women are literally blown up by said super crack, meaning Zorro has now lost his prime source of income. Income. Throughout Frankenhooker, Zorro is forever a total slimeball. Abusive, possessive, and ruling his turf with an iron fist, he continuously has you feeling all kinds of uneasy due to just how all out gross he is, all while he spouts ridiculously misogynistic lines of dialogue. It's not just the Zorro character who makes you wince here, as the actor who plays him is just just terrible. So it's probably not surprising that this was his second and last acting role. Number eight, Mayor Larry Vaughn, Jaws and Jaws 2. No, Larry, you can't blame this one on a damn barracuda attack, you utter arsehole. Throughout Steven Spielberg's cinema-changing Jaws, Murray Hamilton's Mayor Vaughn is such a frustrating, annoying character who forever has you shaking your head in disbelief. Desperate for the beaches of Amity Island to remain open during their annual boom period of tourism, Vaughn is more than happy, hell he even encourages others to do the same thing, to look the other way as a giant great white shark stalks the shoreline. In the iconic 1975 picture, Larry cites boating accidents and barracudas as the cause of death when it was actually shark related. He then also happily proclaims the beach is safe once a tiger shark is caught, despite shark expert Matt Hooper repeatedly telling the arrogant, stubborn Mayor Vaughn that the caught shark is not the shark. Skip ahead to the criminally underrated Jaws 2 and Larry Vaughn is again up to his old tricks. This time, not only does he refuse to believe that a 25-foot shark is terrorizing the waters of Amity, he also gets Martin Brody taken out of office as chief of police. Number seven, Wilma Northrup. Creepshow. The fourth story of 1982's fantastic Creepshow anthology offering The Crate is a tale that immediately finds Hal Holbrook's Henry Northrup dreaming of killing his wife Wilma, played by Adrian Barbeau. An aggressive, rude, abusive drunk, Wilma berates and ridicules Henry at every turn, and it's scarily understandable why poor beaten down Henry would like something untoward to happen to his wife. Conveniently, the university that Henry works at just happens to uncover a mysterious Serious crate dated back to 1834. As we would come to find out, said crate contains a furry ape-like being with large teeth 
and a taste for human flesh. By the time the crate concludes, Henry has lured Wilma into the crosshairs of this toothy beast, who eventually kills and eats Barbo's obnoxious character. In real life, of course, Adrian Barbo is an utter sweetheart who's one of the nicest people in the industry. If you only knew Adrian from her turn in Creep Show, though, you probably wouldn't be feeling so warmly towards her, as audiences were more than happy to see her demise. Number 6. Trent Sutton Friday the 13th, 2009. The Friday the 13th franchise is one that offers up plenty of idiots that you're more than happy to hope that Jason Voorhees will snap up and kill in various ways. With that one stupendous line of dialogue, Travis Van Winkle's Trent of the 2009 Friday the 13th remake cements his spot as the biggest annoyance of the whole F13 series. A cocksure rich kid who loves nothing more than dangling his wealth in front of his peers while acting like a misogynistic douche, Every single word that comes out of Trent's mouth makes your skin crawl. Thankfully, in the final act, Trent does run afoul of Jason himself and receives a machete in the back as a reward for his sheer dickheadishness. Number 5. Jeff Cabin Fever. You can make up a really substantial amount of this list with just characters invented by Eli Roth, since he really does like to write characters who are just, well, complete dicks. The creepy over amped Todd of Hostel Part 2 fame has already been covered, and one other Roth creation who cannot be ignored is Joey Kern's Jeff from 2002's Cabin Fever. The eventual death of Jeff at the close of Roth's directorial feature debut was one cheered on by many. It was glorious, it was great, and it was greeted with the sort of positive response usually reserved for seeing the big bad of a film finally toppled. Of course, the reason for such an overwhelmingly positive reaction to Jeff's death is that Roth had set him up as a through and through creep. Then once the shit hit the fan at the realization that a killer virus was in play, Jeff went into self-preservation mode, disowning his friends and girlfriend, taking all of their beer and heading off into hiding. So when Jeff turns up again in the movie's final moments and celebrates having survived, you can't help but smile when he's gunned down by a bunch of local lawmen. Number 4. Joseph Creep and Creep 2. Is it Joseph? Is it Bill? Is it Aaron? It's unlikely that any of these are the true moniker of the series lead of the Creep franchise. Whatever his real name is, Mark Duplass's Creep and Creep 2 character is someone who is majorly unsettling once you see his true colors start to shine through. What makes Joseph, Bill, Aaron eerily troubling, particularly in their first Creep, is how he's depicted as being somewhat playful, a tad eccentric and totally sympathetic. That being down to how his faux story at the start of that 2014 picture is that he has an inoperable brain tumor and wants to make a video for his unborn child. The skin crawling reveals start coming thick and fast in Creep, with Joseph first explaining how he raped his wife, then we hear stark warnings from his sister, and then Joseph's hired filmmaker Aaron, played by Patrick Bryce, ends up tormented and eventually killed by Duplass's twisted soul. Creep 2 continues to showcase this chilling presence, as Joseph takes on the Aaron name and becomes entangled with YouTuber Sarah, all of which culminates in him trying to convince her to commit suicide with him. Yuck. Number 3. Mick Taylor, Wolf Creek and Wolf Creek 2. Such an unsettling, chilling character is Mick Taylor that apparently actor John Jarrett had trouble finding work for two years after the picture came out in 2005. Some of the characters featured on this list may be self serving creeps, others may be misogynistic dickheads, and there are others who have truly sinister, bloodthirsty intentions in mind. For Wolf Creek's Mick, he ticks all of these boxes and then some. As Wolf Creek unravels, we come to to learn that Taylor is a racist, homophobic, sexist, generally xenophobic killer who has a penchant for methodical stalking and calculated torture. On top of that, there's also hints that Mick is a cannibal, because I guess he needed more things to make us find him absolutely terrifying. Mick Taylor is every inch a psychopath, a psychopath who enjoys what he does and enjoys toying with his victims like the proverbial cat with a mouse. And it's this enjoyment and sense of gamemanship that makes Mick such an uncomfortable proposition Position, both for those characters who come across him and for those watching his actions play out on their screens. Number 2. Richie Gecko from Dusk Till Dawn. For full disclosure, Quentin Tarantino's Richie Gecko is actually the character who inspired this entire list. Robert Rodriguez's From Dusk Till Dawn is such a brilliant mishmash of a movie, 
flitting between being a road movie, an action movie, and a horror movie, all while being a ridiculously cool movie. While George Clooney's Seth Gecko merges from an all-out criminal to an anti-hero of sorts while this 1996 picture plays out, Seth's brother Richie doesn't quite follow in the same trajectory. Instead, Richie is a self-serving, lying, manipulative douchebag and continues to be, right up until we see him get turned into a vampire and then killed off. Of course, that's not even mentioning the grim fact that Richie is a convicted sex offender, and his early movie rape and murder of a female bank clerk is then followed by him constantly leering over Juliette Lewis's Kate Fuller. The interactions between Richie and Kate are clearly troubling, but the most chilling moments of From Dusk Till Dawn are the exchanges between Tarantino's character and the doomed bank clerk who is left in his charge while Seth goes hunting for supplies. Number 1. Krug Stillo the Last House on the Left Wes Craven famously created Freddy Krueger, yet one could still argue that The Last House on the Left's Krug Stillo is an even more stomach-turning figure than the dream-tampering Krueger. Given how Freddy is a burned-alive serial child killer who then returned to kill a bunch of young adults, that's really saying something. Yet that's exactly what David Hess's Krug manages to do. Craven's directorial debut, well, not counting those skin flicks he helmed under several pseudonyms, The Last House on the Left is a film which caused huge controversy upon its release due to the sheer graphic nature of what was shown and suggested in this 1972 effort. So much of that shocking content revolving around Krug. To run off a grim laundry list of Krug's actions in The Last House on the Left, there's the kidnap of teenagers Mari and Phyllis, there's the torture of these two girls, there's the rape of the pair, there's the duo's inevitable death, and there's also the fact that Krug keeps his own son addicted to heroin as a way to manipulate him. Rarely has horror cinema seen a character as outright disturbing and disgusting as Krug Stillo. And that's our mildly traumatizing list. Do let me know which of these characters you think absolutely belong here and which you reckon we should have included. As always, I've been Jess from More Culture. Thank Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come follow me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more horror goodness.